life. So we wanted to jump on today and just do a quick video um, about the carnivore diet and kind of what we've been doing, but also touch on, okay, things can happen that are weird while you're on it. So how do we troubleshoot these, these things? Um, so I guess what, what's one <clears throat> Well, uh, I mean, from personal experience, one of the big things that people run into is, uh, is cravings in the beginning. Um, and a lot of times I, I get a lot of questions about is cheese okay or you know how, how much fruit can you have and this and that and in, in well, anything that's uh, not uh, you know animal based like flesh is going to push you away from the goal that you want so are you allowed to have them yes of course you, know, you, you can eat whatever you want but uh, I do know that cheese has for me has had a, a, a negative effect every time I've had it um, yeah and I also think it's important like if you're coming from a standard American diet, or if you're coming from a diet that's very heavy in uh, fruits, vegetables, and other grains, there's definitely gonna be a transition period where your body is going to certainly be craving a lot of things. And it's important to honestly just give yourself a little bit of grace and know that you're not gonna have this very clear like demarcation from previous diet to full on carnivore lifestyle. I know I personally didn't and I'm still not like 100% carnivore. You would, I would classify myself as like a hyper carnivore because uh, about 70 to 80% of my calories come from meat and animal sources and animal fat. Um, the rest being made up of, you know, a little bit of fruit. So if you are getting cravings and you are eating something, you are going off track, it's not the end of the world. Just get back the next opportunity. Um, and understand that as you progress into this, the, there's something cool, really cool that's gonna happen and it's you're gonna start to meter yourself because you're gonna realize how you feel. I know you can speak to this, right? Like yeah. you simply just don't want to eat those things because you realize like, I don't feel great when I consume that and you, you, you understand very clearly this food did this to me mm -hmm. and you just you just cut it out like you start to feel so good it's not worth it yeah there and also it, it actually took me six months of uh, pure carnivore where i ate very I, the only thing i would eat was like cheese and some heavy cream but you know i didn't do fruit for a long time um and even now it's like i really don't feel good when i eat fruit um so it's like very few and far between um i did notice that when you you know in the in, it took it's six months and then now i'm to the point where i legitimately only want to eat once a day if i eat more than once a day i feel terrible and you know i'm do i would be doing it just to kind of just to push stuff down because i think i'm supposed to be eating but if i listen to my body about once a day is all i need to eat which yeah. which actually works for me and i don't feel i don't feel you know bad or hungry or you know my 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 body is telling me what it is that i need and that's important and i think that's another really good point in the sense that this whole construct of we need to eat three balanced meals per day was literally just a lie created by the government and by big agriculture and all the different like the, the dairy industry, the grain industry in order to, so that they could all get like a piece of your wallet and a piece of your day um, and a piece of your brain power. I'll tell you one thing. One of the interesting things that, that I discovered just based on this, this carnivore lifestyle is how much brain power I got back when it came to planning meals. Like there's just no need to think about it. Like you just, you eat the animal source and you don't have to worry about sides. You don't have to worry about seasonings. You don't have to worry about literally anything. You eat that whole piece of food and that's it. Like there's nothing to plan and it makes your life so much easier. There's no more like getting home at the end of the day and being like, oh, I'm too tired to throw together a meal. It's like, well, Certainly not too tired to have him throw a, a ribeye on the grill for me. Yeah, well, <laughs> but, it's easy. But it's so easy. You get back so much brain power not having to think about meals. And right. I know like for most of us who are working professionals with kids, families, like it's that's such a strong point of stress in most people's lives is just simply meal planning. Mm -hmm. Like there's literally whole industries dedicated to making meal plans easy for you like those box kits like the hello fresh that's the kids, other like... the, the other thing that's really like that people don't grasp with the carnivore diet is it's not a diet it's a lifestyle mm -hmm. and it's uh it's not for weight loss it is a it is a human species specific species appropriate diet it is the diet that we are supposed to be on right anything that deviates from that will have consequences whether they're great consequences or small consequences who knows right i mean illness you know the level of illness that comes from eating plants kind of varies 
but I do know that the more you stick to what's appropriate for our species, and that's that is meat. We are we are obligate carnivores. The science is in. We know that we've been eating meat for over three hundred thousand years. It's it's scientifically proven, right? The studies are there. Um, we, that's our that's what we're supposed to be eating. So, it's a, it the goal of carnivores to change your relationship with food, which means that right now you're on this every two hours. I have to eat because my blood sugar is going to drop or, you know, if you feel terrible after, if you have, you know, you can't go two or three hours without eating, without getting hangry, that's metabolic disorder. Hangry mm -hmm. is metabolic disorder. Yes. Yeah. Know? Yeah. Our, our body should be able to adapt to uh, feast and famine very, very easily because that's traditionally yeah. how food occurred millions of years ago. Mm -hmm. um, we're supposed to be able to eat a great deal at a sitting and then be able to go a period of time of fasting. And that doesn't mean that you have to, you know, purposely fast all the time, whatever it is. But, you know, the whole idea of this lifestyle, diet, whatever you want to call it, is getting back to ancestrally how our bodies and our, we're supposed to function as humans so that we can live our, our greatest potential as a human. Right. And that's, that's, that's how, it, you know, carnivore diet, first thing people notice is they heal. And I keep telling people that, that, you know, it takes two, three months for you to heal. And they're like, heal, I'm not sick. I'm like, well, yes, you are. Because that whole metabolic disorder thing I'm talking about. I mean, you're, you're, you know, our whole dynamic of what we think like diabetes is, like your A1C is actually supposed to be under five. Actually, optimal would be more like 4.5, mm -hmm. right? And that's very difficult to do when you're on a sugar-based diet. So 88% of the entire United States is metabolically unhealthy. Right, that's nine out of ten people basically. So there's very few people that that are that are metabolically healthy, and, and it typically is the people that are low carbohydrate because that's closer to carnivore than than the standard American diet. So. Yeah, and I get it. It's hard. It's like really hard to get away from the way that we've been ingrained to eat since our childhood, and um, you know some of the lies that we've even been brought up to believe, like the fact that we need fiber or that red meat is bad for us or eating fat makes you fat. I mean, these things have truly been debunked and it's, it's not. It was all, it was all done for profit, yeah. right? We were lied to. I mean, humans, even before the 1950s had primarily used fat, real fat from animals to cook their food, right? That's where the lie started. We used to eat a lot more meat, right? And, and I don't know if you've noticed that disease and, and, and all this stuff has gotten worse over the years. It hasn't gotten better. We've eaten less meat. Disease has gotten worse. The more, you know, they knew, right? When you want to domesticate a dog, what do you do? Oh, yeah, we had this conversation the other day and I was sitting there and I was like, it's crazy because human beings are now very similar to a domesticated dog, right? Like we've lost our wildness We because, and it started simply with the convenience of steady meals, steady, easy, delicious meals. That's how they got these wolves domesticated, right? The wolves will go up to the campfire where the humans are at, they'll get fed some food, and then, you know, thousands of years or whatever past, millions of years, whatever it is in that evolutionary time period. And now we've got yippee chihuahuas that are just so excited for their mm -hmm. next meal. I mean, we do have the human equivalent of that where human beings were wild and we ended up in this like terribly domesticated situation because of the convenience that was given to us. And we've right. lost and that, that, and, that and, and all of those those lies, we, we like Ansel Keys and all that stuff, like we, we've seen his, like the actual receipts where he was paid by food companies to lie, right? So all of our, all of the data that we, that we use right now, our food pyramid, you know, cholesterol data, all this stuff was, was bought and paid for in the 1950s. And we're still using it today. And people are getting sicker and sicker and sicker. It's crazy because when I was in college, um, we actually, and that was well over a decade ago, um, when I was in college, we actually learned about Ansel Keys and the atrocity that he committed. And so, you know, I felt very fortunate that I got to learn that. And to me, it felt like one of those things like, oh, well, this is clearly obvious because we're learning this in school and this is a college thing. And most adults should probably know this because I'm just a young, dumb college kid. Just mm -hmm. this is a brand new thing. But like, man, here we are literally more than a decade later. And people still have no idea that fat isn't the enemy and we should be eating right. fat over carbs. Our, our primary metabolic state is ketosis, right? We, Babies we, are born in ketosis. Right. We, we, the, the, the first time that you exit ketosis is when a baby goes from eating his mom's milk to 
eating regular regular food or formula or, or regular formula, food. right and actually babies should be going straight from mom's milk to red meat and fat mm -hmm. that's exactly what, what a baby should be eating after yeah. it's our weaned. our baby our like one and a half year old he loves meat like mm -hmm. rare meat it's so funny if you give him a piece of rare meat next to a piece of well done meat he'll pick the rare meat and this right. is just instinctual and i kind of made a post about this the other day is that if we even just look at raising children and what their instincts are like compared to adults like our children are very instinctually against vegetables very instinctually against seeds instinctually against nuts they like fruit they like um meats and they, they like seafood like they like all of those things they love butter our kids will totally eat raw pieces of butter mm -hmm. it's amazing um but and again if we're going based on instinct it makes sense well, yeah then that's the thing is our taste buds if you eat mm -hmm. you know you have people have to nobody really likes to raw broccoli or raw leaps of any kind. You have to pour dressing, which is, you know, straight sugar or olive oil or something on it to make it palatable. Yeah, you gotta gross. put fat on your vegetables to like them. Right, you, you, <laughs> you dip your, them in ranch, your body, like... your, your, your taste buds are saying that these things are bitter because they're toxic, right? Mm -hmm. And all plants, every plant, no matter what, is on a spectrum of toxicity. Mm -hmm. They are all toxic. Yes, some are a lot more toxic, some are a lot less toxic. And I think this is a good point. So plants exist on a spectrum of toxicity. Humans also exist on a spectrum of tolerance. There could be certain people, certain ancestries, certain ethnicities, whereby maybe they do tolerate these things better than somebody else who might not. And that's fine. Like, I'm, you can do literally whatever you want to do. Like, we truthfully don't care. But if somebody is going to be helped by this information, like, we're going to tell you. And this is important because, my gosh, the, there's just this basic even concept that like if you ingest poison all the time your immune system is going to go crazy mm -hmm. well so i think about all the patients that i've come across in my years of practicing with autoimmune disorders that thought that they were doing the right thing by switching to like a vegetarian or a vegan diet because now it's consuming plants and worse. that's better for you <laughs> and they worse. get worse they never get better and then there's this other phenomenon that i see a lot in practice where people start to get healthy so they change their diet from the standard american diet and they start to get healthy and they start to eat a lot of these vegetables and then all of a sudden they're like oh you know what i'm feeling a little people will gaslight them and say oh it's because you're getting healthier that now you're just more sensitive to things so you're picking up on them more bullshit bullshit i i'm sorry i there's no such thing as getting healthier and feeling worse that in and of itself is a moxymoron mm -hmm. the definition of health is having a body that will respond exactly when and how you want it to yeah and don't be fooled by these like people that that are in shape because that's not health either right if anything having muscles is a is a liability she says this all the time mm -hmm. um it's harder on your body and your health to have those muscles. So it's actually better if Because there's a cost to maintain it, right? right? And a cost. Active, active muscle tissue is active tissue. You have a greater caloric need. You have a greater hormonal need. You have to actually stay more physically active again to maintain that. Right, but the point is that that's, that does not equal health. And a lot of people say, oh, you know, look at this person. They look good. Now, maybe some of the things that they do are helpful, but just because they are, they're in that physical condition doesn't mean that something's not going on inside. Mm -hmm. Let's look at their poop. Let's look at their eyes. How wide are they? Are they, are they you know, bloodshot? Do they have bags over their eyes? What does their skin look like? Because mm -hmm. skin, skin and nails and eyes give away 100% of the time. 100% of the time, if somebody you know says, "Oh, I'm healthy," and I look and I look and I see like in the corner of their elbow or on the back of their shoulder or below their neck, all these you know skin tags and like little red breakouts. bumps and breakouts. No, I'm sorry, there's something going on, and it's mm -hmm. and it's usually related to plant toxicity. One thing that doesn't exist on a spectrum of toxicity is meat. Yeah. Right, because you are what you eat. Why would something like I'm made of flesh and tissue? Why would that? particular thing tissue be inherently bad for me to eat right because it is what I am so why would it be inherently bad for me I'm made of that stuff it mm -hmm. makes zero sense you know and it gives us the best so again we're we're made of protein right so consuming protein that's gonna break down into individual amino acids when it starts to go through your digestive tract and those individual amino acids are literally what we use for all healing and repairing as well mm -hmm. as things like DNA transcription and translation like amino acids are required for that as well too so literally just keeping your DNA healthy um, it's so interesting like I'm sure we've all been faced with those crazy vegetarians or vegans um, and I just actually had a patient the other day tell me a story about uh, a family member who was I think a vegetarian or a vegan who grew up very similar to that and they ended up dying of some sort of uh, brain issue 
And it's just so obvious to me, knowing what I know, that this chronic deficiency of healthy fats and healthy cholesterol in the body is exactly what led to that brain dysfunction, right? You need cholesterol to feed your brain. You need cholesterol to feed all your hormones. You need cholesterol to heal and repair throughout your whole entire body. So there is this myth that cholesterol is the bad guy. It's actually, it's actually good, the good guy that's been very, very misrepresented. Right, yeah. Well, it's just because cholesterol is what tries to save you from so the, the reason you have heart disease yeah. is from elevated blood sugar constantly. Elevated blood sugar and constantly spiking insulin is, is what and causes inflammation. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to caveat that because blood sugar in and of itself shouldn't necessarily be a problem because we have a built-in meter for that. We have insulin built in for that. So here's the thing. We should be able to handle a spike in blood sugar without any problems. The underlying issue below that is if there's chronic inflammation present in your body from the consumption of seed oils, that's going to make the blood sugar issue even more pronounced and the insulin issue even more pronounced. Because here's the thing, like someone like me, if I go and eat a piece of fruit, my body can handle that sugar. My insulin's going to respond really well. I'm not going to store it as fat. And it's because I don't have that underlying burden of the toxic seed oils and vegetable oils and canola oils in my body to make that happen, right? That's that's the difference. Well, the other thing is that when if eleva if your blood sugar is elevated consistently, what that means is like, okay, I ate for breakfast, I had you know a bagel or this or that, and all of those things are spiking your blood sugar for a long period of time. When blood sugar stays high and insulin doesn't work as effectively, then you, that mm -hmm. that blood sugar stays in your blood and it glycates things, and it glycates things like your cholesterol that's running through your blood. So it attaches to different proteins. That in and in itself is inflammatory and will destroy your arteries. Mm -hmm. So, it you should not be spiking your blood sugar more than you know a, a tiny bit, and usually that would in the form of, sh of fruit would really be the only appropriate way to do it. And even then, for me, I actually feel terrible when I eat mm -hmm. fruit. The other day, I had a, I had three pieces of pineapple. My blood sugar actually dropped. It went down to like 68, and I'm sitting on the couch, and I'm like, wow, I feel terrible. Yeah, he was like ready to so fall asleep. So to me, it's like, why would I even do that? I had three pieces of pineapple, and I'm ready to crash on the, on like, it's, it was the weirdest thing. It's because yeah. my body rejects it now. I don't really want it. I don't really need it. And I think there's also the concept that a lot of people might not be aware of. Um, it's a process in your body called gluconeogenesis. And so this is actually the process of creating glucose for your body to use from protein intake. So saying that you are not getting enough blood sugar if you're eating a protein rich diet is actually incorrect because your body does have this mechanism built in whereby it can actually generate glucose from that. And, you know, he's a perfect example. He's, he's been testing his blood sugar just to see what's happening after each meal and it's staying steady and it's staying in an appropriate range. It's mm -hmm. always, it's always roughly in the eighties. It's always like, it, so my, like your target fasting blood sugar is what my blood sugar stays at all the time. It's about 85. Um, mm -hmm. typically well, recently since I've not been eating dairy, um, it's actually been lower. It's been like in the high seventies. So I have I have the, the the feeling and the, the theory that that cheese and dairy somehow still spikes your insulin, keeps your blood sugar a little bit elevated. So I don't think it's something that you should be eating all the time. It's, yeah, everybody, it's, every person's different though. Dairy's dairy's an interesting yeah. thing because there are various schools of thought on this. And I mean, my short version is if you tolerate it, go for it. Um, and there might be a again a spectrum of tolerance for dairy too. You might tolerate raw dairy. You might tolerate kefir. You might tolerate only hard cheeses or only soft cheeses or only Greek yogurt or only lactose free. Whatever it is, um, but if you aren't tolerant of it, it's gonna create more inflammation in your body, which is gonna make it harder for your body to heal and repair. Because ultimately, again, this is this is what we're trying to do. We're literally just only trying to get your body into the healthiest state possible so it can keep up with all of the healing and repairing that it needs to do on a daily basis because we are being assaulted from all sides, right? It's the it's the EMFs in the air, it's the toxins in our water, it's all of the all of the poisons that are in our products that we use on a daily mm -hmm. basis. Like we are being assaulted from every single angle all day long, in and out, and at the very least, what we can do is control what we eat so that we can give ourselves the best shot. 
And if that aligns with you, great. Like, this is what matters to us. We have two little kids. We have things we want to accomplish in this world and in this life. And having strong, healthy, fit bodies is, like, literally the first thing that you yeah. need. And, and you will, you, you'll you never know what it truly means to be human or to have health until you can run without sugar. And I know that sounds dr dramatic, but it's actually true. And it's in the, and the reason is because you're, you're tied in and you're, you're, you sugar acts on dopamine, right? So, so it's a reward and you're, it's action, reward, action, reward, action, reward. We've seen this with drug addicts. We've seen this with alcoholics. It's the same with food, right? You should not, your diet shouldn't be based on something that is, rewarding your brain center just so that you can survive every two and a half out three hours whatever it is how often you eat mm -hmm. you should be able to function fully and effectively without having to eat something in order to get that right i can go a day two three days without eating and i don't feel anything i'm exact as a matter of fact i actually have more energy when i don't eat my body mm -hmm. creates energy that i need hey go out and get your next meal go kill that animal and bring you know get some meat and, and, and eat it that that's what happens and that is a primal real human feeling mm -hmm. a real human emotion that you do not get to experience when you're on this roller coaster of, of and you know you're feeding into somebody else's dreams you're, you're, it's, you're buying you're buying this you know these these products and, and the, you know the reason why nobody knows about carnivore diet like it's not a big you know mainstream thing is because food companies can't package and and sell the food that we need that is appropriate for us. Mm -hmm. right? you, you're not going to package and sell, you know, little little tiny ribeyes, and you know, it's, it's just go into the cabinet, pop one in your mouth, and eat it, right? So that that paradigm has to change if you want real health. Yeah. We had a question on here about how long we fast. Um, I don't, I don't really. I don't think fasting is appropriate on carnivore. I think that it's it it can happen. Um, accidentally and it's fine but i don't see the benefit so if your primary metabolic state is ketosis already and you're you, you know you're eating meat and fat and you're, you're you're using fat for energy fasting isn't going to change that right no i will say though i think fasting can be a useful tool to get you started in getting your body comfortable being in a state that isn't dependent on food yeah. um, or at least a, a fast adapted state because that state is going to very closely uh, mimic what it's like when you're actually just not eating sugar. Um, so if you need to experiment with something like intermittent fasting where you're going 16 and 8 or 20 and 4, mm -hmm. I think that could be a useful thing to try, again, simply just but, to train your body. But I think a lot of people think that, that hold on one second. The baby's uh, awake. baby's awake. Hi, Zen. I think a lot of people think that fasting is somehow a fix for the whole blood sugar paradigm that I was just talking about, but it's not. Right? It's still, you can fast and then eat, and it doesn't necessarily correct all the things that um, that a sugar-based diet is going to damage, right? You're still going to have glycation. You're still going to, uh-oh. <laughs> He's hungry. Carnivore baby wants some milk. Carnivore baby wants milk. All right, go ahead. All right, um, this is happening. Mm -hmm. There we go. It's not the most obvious place I've ever breastfed, and I truthfully don't care. Yep, I'm next. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh, man. But, yeah, it's, it's, it's been a great change for us, and even our kids really like it. Like, nobody nobody's missing out no and we don't we don't there's no snacks or junk oh, or crap that was the other thing that i wanted to comment on as like the primal nature of going carnivore um if you've ever wanted to heighten your senses to insane levels this is the this is how it's done like mm -hmm. i was telling him this today this morning in the gym i was like having a really hard time finishing my workout and just being in there because i could smell literally everybody's yeah. breath like, and so i i stink. did i did carnivore initially probably three four months before she like decided to do it she was like you know you're kind of crazy and that's that's always our reaction mm -hmm. um they're you know they're like oh why are you doing this this sounds nuts and and after she saw all the benefits and all the different things in the beginning i told her that i said my sense of smell is crazy heightened like i can smell every single person's breath and that's not always a good thing i can i, I can smell all the food i could and i'm talking about meat and like different things but it's you know when oh, you can smell chemicals so much yes, more like yes. um where was oh i took my daughter to the to the movies last week and like the smell of the popcorn and the butter they put on it, it smelled like straight petroleum yeah like 
And it's because it comes from seed oils that come from petroleum. Right. But it was one of those moments where I was like, oh my God, like but I you, used to think this smelled good. I used to tell her, I'm like, I can smell every everybody's breath at the gym. Mm -hmm. She's like, that's weird. And I'm like, yeah, I swear and to God. And they don't have to be close to us, like yeah. literally six feet away. I can smell like, six, seven oh, feet away yeah, sometimes from it's, people. And it's, it's just crazy. And it makes you wonder, like, that is that everybody all of the time? But I, we it should have that be. sense of smell. That is it. That's an, a, that's a uh, evolutionary, like, yeah, that that is an evolutionary advantage. I this is this is a whole other yeah. bigger conversation about the you know big disease process that was happening the last two years, mm -hmm. the big C, and mm -hmm. the fact that it took away people's sense of smell. And part of me was wondering if it's just taking away that humanness from us. Mm -hmm. Like, was this a weapon to take away that ability for us to connect to each other through our sense of smell and taste? Right. Um, yeah, that was crazy. Yeah, Another question I on here. Yeah, deodorant is awful. So yeah, we we the one that we use, it's a brand called Truly's, and it's literally like the cleanest thing. Like you can eat it if you it. want, and he doesn't even really. Use I haven't used deodorant since I started Carnivore. You don't smell it like. Yeah, you actually. You so smell. when you get through the process of actually just getting toxins and shit out of your body, um, you don't really yeah. smell anymore. Like it's it you just don't like you don't really need it. But we do use a really really natural one that you could actually even eat. Like it's made with what coconut oil sugar sugar yeah. i don't know it's called yeah. truly's it's great um no affiliation but it's yeah. awesome yeah you you don't really I, I find you don't need it and i think in and i i, I want to say this because a lot of people you know it's it's it is difficult but the best way to fast to streamline to get to where you want to be is to do a strict meat salt and water diet for three months if you do that that initial three you know three months and it's hard I know it's it's difficult. There's some pitfalls. There's some things you're going to run into. But if you do that, you will dramatically change your life for the better. Absolutely. Right. And it's honestly, it's I think it's worth it because if for whatever reason you hate it, like hey, kale always will always be there to embrace you yeah. with its toxic. Kale doesn't love you back. Though. <laughs> but I'm just saying, like it's worth an experiment. Like what is life except for one giant experiment? Right. None of us know what we're doing. Like we're figuring it out as we go along. <laughs> None of us were given some sort of like express manual of like hey this is exactly all the things that should happen but that's the problem is like i know so the human beings are the only species on the planet that need to be told what to eat and we're told what to eat because of the whole thing i was explaining later they, they want you to eat these things so that you don't have e extreme health they, mm -hmm. they don't want you to be at your peak because then you you're a cog in the wheel in their system and they're you're, you're just making money for, for for somebody else and you know that that whole thing is is, is a separation of like pulling yourself out of that dynamic and it's just it's empowering it's it's impactful for your life and i i know that if you if you adopt this carnivore diet you're you're not going to want to go back you're not you're going to love how you feel so good it's like not worth it for me to eat something i have no desire i have no cravings whatsoever for anything mm -hmm. sugar-based and i think one thing that people need to understand about like people sharing this diet is that nobody has any money to make off of you honestly yeah. like there is like i can't sit there and sell you going and making your own like getting you know what i'm saying like there's nothing that for anybody like there's no packaged goods there's no whatever like i mean there's some products that people will try to sell but i mean the, the whole thing the but whole you purpose don't need is it. To... it doesn't it's not a need right like you don't there's nothing that you need to buy there's nothing that you need to do like it's just it's yeah. so simple and it's so easy um there's a comment about smell and taste loss from the big C. So that happens because literally the nerves that exit your brain and go into the um, the sinuses will actually get super, super inflamed from that virus. And nerve inflammation can take a really long time to go down. And we're probably gonna sound like broken records, but cleaning up toxins in the diet is the best way to get that brain inflammation yep. to go away, just like any other inflammation in the body. Carnivores don't get sick at all. We don't get the sniffles, we don't get you just don't get sick. I know that doesn't sound, that may not sound true, but I guarantee you will not get sick on a carnivore diet. There is nothing, your body is 100% more effective than it was before. It is absolutely crazy. Yeah. So. It's really cool. I mean, I we obviously like it, and it's obviously been really dramatic for us. I was actually trying to find a picture of me previously. I don't know if you guys go to his pages, you can see a bunch of pictures of me in bikinis. It's obnoxious and I'm sorry, but it's fine. Um, but I was trying to find a before picture because I mean, the body composition changes that I've experienced in just, you know, about six months, five, six months, and not even being full carnivore, it's insane. Like I've done 
more fitness competitions. And the way that I maintain my body now with no extra effort is what I used to strive for when I was like getting ready to go on stage. It's insane. And it's, it's yeah. basically effortless. And I'm, and that blows me away, completely blows me away. And I don't eat a single freaking vegetable. And that makes me no, so happy. Not, you don't eat, the only thing you eat that's not meat is fruit, fruit. occasionally. Yeah. It's not that often. Um, you guys been carnivore? Um, for me, I have been pseudo carnivore for about six months, and I think you you know for me for me it's actually probably about three or four. Okay. He's been more about. Six I started months. in January. January, yeah. January fifth was the last time I had plants. <laughs> um, yeah, so six, six months exactly, pretty much. Close yeah, to. and again, it doesn't take long doesn't for take long results to happen. Like yeah. I just for me, January was okay. I'm gonna give up vegetables. And the first thing that went away was like my lower belly pooch. It was just gone. Yeah. Like it was the most insane yeah. thing. Um, and then it was, you know, a slow progression of getting other things back. It took me a long time to give up rice and oats. Um, and that's you still drink coffee too. That's the, I gave up. Yeah, coffee. I that was hard. That was really hard. But I feel way better without it. And I will fully admit that I am addicted to coffee, yeah. and I'm just not there yet. I, I'm, you know what I'm addicted to? Absolutely nothing. Yeah. Which is which is. Freedom, right? You don't mm -hmm. know what it's like to not be addicted to. You, like, you are addicted to sugar, mm -hmm. guaranteed. If you had sugar today, you're addicted to it. Okay, it's dopamine. It's just science. You don't know what it's like not to be addicted to anything, and it is a. It's actually an amazing feeling. You mm -hmm. actually have real freedom to do whatever you want, and not have to say, "Oh, I, I, I need to eat. What am I going to eat today? What am I going to eat in four hours? What are we going to have tonight?" I don't really care, right? Most mm -hmm. of the time, I just eat at like twelve o'clock. I have a ribeye, and I'm done. I don't yeah. need to eat the rest of the day. I feel great. I feel absolutely yeah. and That's another kind of comment about just someone like they feel good eating greens. And that's great. Like I, I, I said earlier, you might not have, been, not have been on here, but one, great. If it works for you, awesome. Like I, I'm so on board with whatever works for each individual. Mm -hmm. But two, plants exist on a spectrum of toxicity. Humans exist on a spectrum of tolerance. And if those spectrums line up and create magic in your body, I'm here for it. Yeah. And the Go thing for it. Like that's amazing. For me, that it wasn't the thing. I mean, the the joint I would I had had chronic back and neck pain um, for years and it's significantly better I I think that's only going to continue to get better um, and it's kind of a funny thing because I treat joint pain in people but I trust me yeah, to we're, not, inject, we're, we're, but... not, we're not supposed to get sore when we work out no either, right so when I when I go to the gym and work out now I don't get sore I can literally destroy my like feels like I destroyed my body in the gym not sore not sore the next day I literally go back in and do that same workout the next day 100 percent and it my strength is still there i lift i lift a lot heavier than most people do right and i could do it i could do the same exercise every single day no no now if i drink coffee in the morning right like it's been a few times that i've had coffee within hours i can feel soreness right within hours if i have something even, even with fruit within hours i can feel like feel feel some mm -hmm. soreness so i can immediately tell when i have some plants in my yeah. diet almost instantly it's like it's like your, turns on something in your, your body sense, i think the sensitivity to though to those toxins right. that are present in there a lot better um it becomes a lot more obvious. the other thing too is you say oh i feel great eating greens like you you don't know what it's like to not eat any of those things like you don't know what it's like to feel great eating meat so you can't compare the two so you may feel great you may be potentially feel a thousand times better than that Right, this you may. That's why it's an experiment. Right, right? you don't like, know, and you just, won't know until you've actually been a hundred percent meat based, no plants. Do that for three months, and then at the end of it, you tell me that that you want to go back to greens. You will absolutely not want to do that. Guaranteed. Yeah, I don't ever want to eat another vegetable. Never. It's I will never like, eat it. It's it's poison. I and I and so we were in Puerto Rico a month about a month ago, mm -hmm. and you know it's one of those. It was a conference where like. You know, there's there's buffet meals, things are provided, and I was like, okay, I'll scoop a couple, you know, vegetables onto my plate, and I felt bad, like I didn't feel good, and I just didn't, I just don't want that for myself. Yeah, that, it's just it's, your, it's really that simple. Like, your baseline I for feeling good can for change. Myself. You know, you could you could potentially feel a lot better. Mm -hmm. just, absolutely, you could. You know? And there's literally tens of thousands of stories on this. Um, Dr. Sean Baker has compiled a lot of them. Um, Dr. Anthony Chafee is probably yeah. one of the best. I mean, if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be on this diet. Everything the man said has turned out to be gold. What kind of fat do you eat? Cheese. Um, we cook with a lot of grass-fed butter. I eat, so I used to be the person that cut all my fat off of my steaks. Yes. Now I will eat 
an entire steak. Yeah. There is nothing left on there. Like I eat the fat off of my steak and it's so freaking good. The gristle on the steak oh, is so, so important. Good. That's where the collagen is, right? That's where the balance of amino acids are. If you cut off the, mm. off the gristle, throw that away and eat just the meat, you're only getting certain amino acids. You yeah. should eat the gristle. That, that is where all the collagen, the part of the back of ribs, when you rip that off to put it on the grill, that's pure collagen. You yeah. have to, that's, that's something you have to have in your diet. Don't take that off. Yeah. Eat um, I eat eggs with the yolks, of course. Yeah. Um, I also, I don't eat cheese because cheese doesn't agree with me. Uh, I eat full fat yogurt. I will put uh, raw heavy cream in my coffee. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's, that's a lot of where I get my fats from. Yeah. Yeah. And just fat from animals. And we, so yeah. the isotope testing, we know that we, we literally ate fat and meat off of, you know, large megafauna for three three hundred thousand years we know that for a fact yeah actually, i'm mad i've never i never will get to eat a woolly mammoth right mammoth can you imagine a mammoth ribeye <laughs> seriously that sounds mammoth amazing ribeye? <laughs> i don't even know if i'd share it i would just keep that to myself till it was done i'd make a video and i would record it and then afterwards i'd be like y'all look what i just had mammoth mammoth ribeye Jeez. see this is the type of like lab created meat i could get behind like if they could figure out a way to clone it's like Jurassic it. Park, which yeah, you walk in, but like for you know, carnivores. This animal's been dead for four million years. This one's two million years. Which one would you like? <laughs> well aged. Yep, it's well, well aged. aged. <laughs> I would do it. I would eat it. Oh so man. All right, I think that might be a good place to end yeah. on the well aged megafauna meat train. <laughs> That's my goal. Yeah. yeah, that's that's a new life goal. All right. Well, thank you guys yeah, we'll you for soon. joining us today. We'll get this baby off of me so I can shut this phone off. Here, grab this baby. Oh, man. Grab the baby. Oh, is there one more question on here? I think this diet would help with a histamine issue. Yes. 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 <laughs> but one thing that I will caution, um, really well-cooked meats will actually increase histamine. Yeah, so overcooked meat releases we, um, histamine from the meat. So yeah, so beef. like we have a hard time with brisket. Um, ground beef is like hit or miss on some days because those can be a histamine issue. But generally speaking, yes, this could definitely help. Um, yeah. a histamine thing so for sure everything that you could possibly imagine all the, i have zero health problems for the first yeah. time i literally have zero health problems. i have perfect poop yeah perfect skin perfect hair i got hair coming back that was falling out i got my eye cult my eyes are like i got people telling me i'm beautiful i just turned 37 my skin looks amazing and all this stuff i used to treat my body like a garbage can i didn't always look that good right people mm -hmm. are telling me this now Right, people are to ask. Like I shaved the other day, and somebody's like, "Dude, you're gonna get carded at the meat counter." I was like, oh, that's funny. Ha ha. You know, so I still look young. You know. Yeah, I um, I get, I also get told that frequently. Mm -hmm. and I don't know, people are blowing smoke, but um, yeah, it's it's a thing. It's it's reverse aging because you're reducing your inflammation. You're giving yourself the body what it needs to actually heal. Yeah, it could reproduce. It could, your cells get to reproduce the way they're supposed to. Appropriately. Thing. You, you have to have meat to survive. A vegan diet is inherently... Yeah, a vegan diet is a very privileged diet because if we didn't have the modern technology to create these other these like protein extracts, you would die. Like you would essential, just die. Essential means you have to have them. All of the essential uh, amino acids and things mm -hmm. that we have to have in fats only exist in meat, meaning yeah. you have to eat those things to survive. We, we get away with it now because, you know, vitamin B supplements, B12 supplements, and, you know, these this and this supplement, but... We didn't have that 10,000 years ago, right? Yeah. We weren't, we, we know we're not supposed to be eating a vegan diet. Absolutely Another question not. about protein powders. Uh, we do a collagen one, a collagen based protein powder. Like he doesn't really use it. I will do a shake like every other day or so. Um, I just enjoy the ease of it. Sometimes I just, sometimes I just get chewing exhaustion. Like I just don't want to chew any more food. Um, My theory is that your stomach is designed to extract nutrients from meat. We know that, oh. right? Joey, shut that door. We, and we we prefer red meat we don't like chicken um we'll do salmon we'll do like if we're gonna go out to eat somewhere um we'll pick like a japanese place where we can get sashimi because we know for sure it's not you know cooked in any vegetable oils or anything like that um and yeah fish is fine like sometimes whole foods has this like sushi grade yellowtail that we like to get yeah, it's and it's so delicious we do raw oysters every friday dollar um, raw oysters um if you're whole near foods, a whole foods Every, Every Friday. Friday, you can Minimum get oysters for a dollar, which is like the greatest deal in the history of deals ever. It's amazing. Um, what else? We eat eggs. We eat bacon. Um, that's if it has a mom, you can it. eat it. Yeah, this is, what we say is if it had a mom, you can eat it. Right. If it has a mother, you can eat it. Yeah. If it 
walked and talked. They're, they're, don't do anything that talks. Dan. That's my secret of the apocalypse. Episode. That's weird. <laughs> okay, we'll end <laughs> with there. <laughs> Thank Bye you guys man. for hanging out. Bye.